No one can deny that in our day and age, men and masculinity are under attack. And it is hardly a surprise why many are pushing back, why many men are pushing against demasculinization. And I am on the record, I want to see strong men as leaders and young men raised up as leaders. Now, for certain, there are uh, debates regarding uh, men and women and gender roles and complementarianism and egalitarianism, which are ongoing. Yet, I am sure that many of you have seen some of the contemporary debates and discussions regarding demasculinization and how some in the community of faith have pushed back with a kind of hyper-patriarchy. When you go on social media and you see those who are arguing for patriarchy or hyper-patriarchy, communicating, broadcasting from their offices, their homes, and you see them surrounded with weapons and dead animal parts on the wall, what does that make you think? What do you conclude when you see that? Now, admittedly, those things are the exception. More frequently than not, you will see those arguing for patriarchy or hyper-patriarchy, believing that men who are truly masculine are leaders. We agree there. They have a wife who is in complete one-way submission to their directions, and they have a quiverful or a litter of many children, four, six, eight, etc. And I know that some of us are a bit confounded uh, by that, because uh, many uh, families today certainly don't have the economic means to have that kind of a large family. But, again, those are ongoing conversations. Yet, in the midst of what is the true masculinity test, is it to see a man who is strong, who has a wife who is in complete one-way submission to her husband's commands to her, and he has a large number of children, six, eight, ten, whatever it might be. In that discussion, we almost never hear about examples from Holy Scripture, notably those of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, or Paul the Apostle, because those who are pushing that kind of masculinity are appealing to the Bible. Yet, two of the most important people in the Bible and the New Testament and the apostolic scriptures are often never discussed in terms of their own personal lives, in terms of whether or not they meet that standard of presumed masculinity. Look at Yeshua the Messiah, our Savior himself. He lived at home working the family business as a carpenter, until around the age of 30, and then he began an itinerant preaching ministry, which, of course, we know led to his arrest, execution, and resurrection. But Yeshua the Messiah was one who never married nor had children. So he actually failed such a masculinity test as we frequently see out there from those pushing patriarchy or hyper-patriarchy. Paul the Apostle, whose instructions in his letters are frequently appealed to regarding a proper marriage and a proper assembly of faith, who leads, who doesn't lead, he himself, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he valued singleness over the married estate. 
he was unmarried, nor did he have children. By the standard of masculinity being pushed by many in patriarchal circles, Paul the Apostle was a failure as well. Now, I don't believe that Yeshua or Paul were failures in terms of their masculinity. Instead, I believe that what they did as itinerant traveling teachers and ministers subverted many of the cultural norms of Second Temple Judaism as well as Greco-Roman paganism. And so for us as the Messiah's followers today, yes, a man having a wife and having children are wonderful things and they are blessings from God. But we also have to be aware that those are things which neither Yeshua nor Paul had. And how many of us need to see some of our value systems readjusted or recalibrated to be more in alignment with the examples of figures like Yeshua and Paul. Yeshua and Paul did not meet the masculinity standards of those pushing patriarchy or hyper-patriarchy today, be they in sectors of Hebrew roots or in sectors of Christian nationalism. And their examples should have people in those movements hold back on some of their rhetoric.